Palm Sunday uh, service. It's nice to, to see you. Um, you should have a copy of the Holy Week uh, services. This is the beginning of Holy Week. It's important to start off with Palm Sunday, and then go through the, the week um, and finishing off with uh, Easter Sunday in a week's time. So just draw your attention uh, to these services, in particular the Good Friday one at Kirkhope at Edric Bridge, 7 o'clock, um, short service of readings, <coughs> prayers and hymns. You're very welcome to come to any of these uh, events during Holy Week. A call to worship comes from Zechariah. Rejoice, rejoice, people of Zion. Shout for joy, you people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He comes triumphant and victorious, but humble and riding on a donkey. Our first hymn, all glory, Lord, and honour to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas. <laughs>
see that the church decorated it um, so nicely. If you haven't had a chance to look at the, the windows, please uh, do so. Uh, maybe not during the sermon, so you have to pay more attention then. Um, you can have a look. Um, Lisa and others have done a, a wonderful job um, at the front here, at the front of the church, and all the windows. So thanks to that. Please take the time to appreciate uh, all this in this Easter season. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, on this Palm Sunday, it is so good to gather together, young and old, here in your house. As many have celebrated Palm Sunday in this place and in other places of worship in this area in the past, so we continue in that wonderful tradition. We focus upon you, upon the coming of Jesus down into the city of Jerusalem. And the people crying, Hosanna, God bless he who comes in the name of the Lord. Father, we sing these praises today, and as the children and others sung Hosanna, so we do the same. Lord, help us to focus on the words that those in the crowds um, shouted out to Jesus that day. And just the wonder of that special occasion, but so many, many people, thousands and thousands gathered together in the holy city of Jerusalem. Lord, we bring you our praise and our thanks this day. We can never thank you enough. We look ahead to this holy week which has just begun and all the different things that will take place in uh, this border's area. We pray for other churches as they gather together uh, this morning and throughout the week and especially on Easter Sunday morning itself. Lord, may we look ahead to the sadness of Good Friday but to the wonderful joy of Easter Sunday morning, when the tomb was empty and Jesus was alive and appeared to Mary and others uh, to prove that he had risen from the dead. So, Father God, bless our time together as we pray together, as we sing together, as we worship and enjoy fellowship. May we rejoice in this day. And Lord, hear us as we join together in the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and now. Next hymn, Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children in <coughs>
it's nice to have some children again today. Dylan and Millie, give us a wave. Did you enjoy the service on Friday at the schools? Yeah. Yeah, the place was, was, the place was really buzzing. We had people all over and up here and all over the place. Um, it was nice to see so many people. Um, got a story today about an animal. Um, and it's very interesting because last week in um, uh, Ettrick Church, after um, I was here and we went to Ettrick Church, we had a dog come in to the service. A nice, a collie dog. He didn't stay for the whole service, but he came in and he was very friendly. He jumped up in one of the, the people as well. Um, I think he belonged to one of the local shepherds. So it was lovely because in that church in Ettrick, dogs used to come with the shepherds many, many years ago. And upstairs, they've got bits to separate the dogs so that they don't fight during the service. So no fighting during the service here today. Uh, we've got many dogs. Um, but that was that was nice. So today's story is about uh, an animal. Uh, we've got them there, um, and it's a donkey, right? Um, and donkey belonged to this wee boy here. He was called Nathan, and the donkey belonged to, to his dad. Really, one day Nathan's just going about. This was two thousand years ago in the time of Jesus, and everything's fine. And he sees these two men running down the road really fast, and he wonders what's happening and they're looking at his donkey and pointing at it and saying yeah that's 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 the donkey so Nathan wondered what was going on we'll see the next slide right he ran down the road the men by this time were starting to untie his dad's donkey and he thought this is very strange these men shouldn't be doing that meanwhile his dad was there and he was just ch chatting to some friends he was waving his hands around and Nathan was trying to get his dad's uh, attention uh, to tell him that these men he thought were stealing his donkey. And the next slide, he spoke uh, to his dad, and his dad says, "Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I know all about this." His dad gave him a, a wink of his eye, and he says, "The Lord Jesus has need of this donkey today, so it's okay. I've had this all arranged, and these two men were expected to come and take the donkey. So don't worry. Let's go and see what happened." The next one. So, Nathan got, went and got his mum, and his dad was there, the two men were there, he's got his wee sister, who was called Martha, I think, and she was there as well, and they went with the two men and the donkey to see the exciting thing that was going to happen. The next one. There was Jesus. Now, Jesus had come to the, the place called Bethany, which was just um, uh, up from uh, Jerusalem, and before, he knew the, the, the donkey, and the, the little donkey as well, and... All the people were standing together, and his friends, the disciples, they got Jesus to sit on the donkey. Very carefully, they put some of their, their, their jackets and their coats there, and Jesus sat on the donkey. And we'll see what happens next. Jesus started to go down the hill towards the big city of Jerusalem. The people were, were all cheering. They didn't have flags like we might have today, but they had palm branches. And that's why it's called Palm Sunday. Not these palms, but palms from the tree, from palm trees. I think you can still you can see some palm trees in Scotland. Um, if you got to Plockton, across some sky, there's palm trees there, and there's some other ones. And of course, if you go to botanical gardens in Edinburgh, Glasgow, other places, you would see lots of palm trees. And maybe you've seen palm trees when you've been on your holidays. You sometimes get coconuts um, there as well on the palm trees. So they took the big branches and they started to wave them. Uh, and say hooray for Jesus, they shouted Hosanna, like we've just sung, which is like hooray, also means save us now. Um, and they said, God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus was a very best king, God bless our king, they were saying, as he came down on the donkey, they were all cheering. And the next one, um, that just tells us, it says, more and more people crowded the same track, throwing their coats down on the ground for the donkey to walk on, uh, winding all the way down the hill, Across to the lovely city of Jerusalem they went, cheering and singing, waving and dancing. So if people put their cloaks down to make like, we would call it a red carpet today. If some royal comes, you have a red carpet. So they made this, this path for Jesus to come all the way into the city. And the last slide, I think, is Jesus waving to all the people. They're still shouting, Hosanna, God bless the King, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That special day, as Jesus came into the city of Jerusalem, is known this very day and this Sunday as Palm Sunday. 
Let's have a wee prayer. My God, we thank you that we can celebrate Palm Sunday, that we can cheer and shout Hosanna with all the children and the adults and all the people who welcomed Jesus as he came into that big city on the donkey. Help us to celebrate this day in all that we do and say and sing and enjoy this Palm Sunday. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Our Bible reading is from Psalm 118, from verse 19, Psalm 118, verse 19, page 611 in the News Bible, and Linda will read it for us today. Open to me the gates of the temple, I will go in and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, only the righteous can come in. I praise you, Lord, because you heard me, because you have given me victory. The stone which the builders rejected was worthless, turned out to be most important of all. This was done by the Lord, but a wonderful sight it is. This is the day of the Lord's victory. Let us be happy, let us celebrate. Save us, Lord, save us. Give us success, O Lord. May God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. From the temple of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God. He has been good to us. With branches in your hand, start the festival and march through the water. You are my God and I give you thanks. I will proclaim your greatness. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good and his love is eternal. And one thing I forgot to say, and the next time you see a donkey, and there's a donkey sanctuary near where we live in St. Boswell, so you can go there and see many donkeys. Um, have a look at the donkey's back and see what sort of shape the donkey's back, and you should find that it's like a cross shape on the donkey's back. One bit going along there and across the shoulders, um, and another bit making the sign of a cross, and that reminds us that Jesus sat on that donkey. Sunday. Our next hymn is King of Kings, Majesty. God of heaven, living in me, gentle Saviour, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end, all within me falls at your throne. Your majesty I can but bow, I lay my all before you now, my royal robes I don't deserve, I live to serve your majesty. Let's proclaim Jesus as King of Kings. <laughs>
common leaders in prayer. and care. You have promised to walk with us. As we turn our minds to the world outside this church building, we pray for the neighbourhoods of Ashkirk, Selkirk and the valleys. Show us how we can be used to reflect your love in the streets and towns in which we are placed. Let us share this season of Easter with renewed energy to love our neighbours. Let us pray for all people in parts of this troubled world and in all kinds of need. Lord, shine your light upon those who live in danger of violence, persecution, oppression, displacement, loss and injustice because of race, belief, gender or who they are. We pray that the hearts of those who perpetrate evil may be turned from darkness and awaken to the light of your love and compassion. We pray for greater understanding of how we can better use the resources of the world. <coughs> As caretakers, we have a responsibility to balance our needs with those across the planet and the generations who follow us. Father God, guide us in the decisions we make personally and how we influence those in positions of power in reducing greed and developing an attitude of sharing. Let our light so shine before the world that we will bring glory to our Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Um, maybe uh, to add uh, to these uh, prayers um, the sadness at the end of the death of uh, Mrs. Sheila Henderson from uh, Thirlodine Cottages um, I'll be conducting um, Sheila's funeral a week on Thursday in the Borders Crematorium at 1 o'clock so we'll pray for our family particularly our sister-in-law uh, Margaret and for others in the congregation and friends that we know who have been bereaved at this time so let's just have a short prayer let us pray. Father, we do thank you for Sheila and for others whom we have known, family members and friends who are sadly no longer with us. Lord, we pray for Sheila's sister in law, Margaret, as she arranges things over the next week and a half or so. We pray for those in the number here who have been bereaved in the last few days. Lord God, draw close to them at this time. Help them to know that you are with them at this time and the day and the day of the funeral services. Strengthen them and their families and help them to know that you mourn and grieve alongside them and you know how best to help them. So Father, we pray for all these families in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Lord. Next hymn is Shine, Jesus, Shine. <laughs>
day. Jerusalem, you could say, was chock a block. You couldn't move for people. One estimate says that two and a half million people were in Jerusalem at that time. That's half the population of Scotland. They'd all come to the city to celebrate the week of the Passover. The freedom God had given his people when he brought them out of Egypt and into the promised land. They looked forward to a new freedom which the Jewish Messiah, the promised one, the anointed one, would bring in. Each year the Jewish people had high hopes that the Messiah would come at the Passover and set them free, and especially free from the Romans at this time. Hopes ran high this year because of one man who was called Jesus from Nazareth. Could he be the long-awaited Messiah? Many people were saying that he was. Others weren't sure. Here he comes, shall be someone. And lo and behold, Jesus appears slowly and surely. They're seen sitting on a donkey, accompanied by a huge crowd of people, all shouting and cheering and waving palm branches. There were different groups of people there on that first Palm Sunday, just as there are different groups of people here today. There were different opinions expressed by those different people, just as there are different opinions expressed by the people today. These opinions were about Jesus, and they were expressed in the words which the people shouted out, and in the questions that they asked. We take up the story in Matthew 21. Reading from the first verse, page 30 in the Bibles in the New Testament, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Matthew 21, verse 1. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. There, Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with these instructions Go to the village there ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell him the master needs them, and then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make sure to make true uh, what the pro to make what the prophet had said come true. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and they did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, they threw their cloaks over them, and Jesus got on it. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the, on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise to David's son, God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he? The people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth and Galilee. The crowds answered. Amen. May God add his blessing to our reading from his holy word. In his name, all the glory and the praise. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Who is he? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We're going to look at these words which the people shouted and the question which they asked and the questions that people are asking today. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. These were shouted out, these words, by those who believed in Jesus. Those who had heard him teach, those who had witnessed his great miracles and healings, those who had responded to his call to follow him, like Zacchaeus that we saw a couple of weeks ago. Today, there are those who are followers of Jesus here in this church and in other churches and other fellowships and right across this land and those unable physically to attend church as well. Those who have invited Jesus into their lives as Saviour and die for their sins and as Lord whom they obey and follow. The people in Jerusalem shouted out at the top of their voices, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And everyone heard them. They couldn't not hear them. How loud are we shouting out about Jesus today? In many ways, we're only whispering about Jesus. And so hardly anyone hears us. 
Why are we so shy? Why are we so embarrassed and afraid to speak up for the Lord? To tell others about him. To praise him as the King of Kings, as he did on that Palm Sunday. As the Lord of Lords, as the Son of God. As the one who has brought us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. As the one who has rescued us from death and has given us life, life in all its ways. Is that not something to sing and shout about? Of course it is. And if we can't shout out about that, what can we shout about? The most wonderful thing ever has happened to us when we became followers of Jesus. Let's shout about it. Let's sing about it. Not only here in our church building, as we've been doing this morning, where it's safe and only ourselves and God can hear us, but there are times that we should tell people outside of this building, where it's not so safe, not so uh, comfy, and everyone can hear us. How do we do this? We don't just go outside a building and down to the, the shops and start shouting about Jesus. That might not be quite the right way to do things. We need to be a bit more subtle than that. Perhaps we need to let our lives, and not just our voices, shout out for Jesus. Perhaps we need to let our lives, not just our voices, shout out for Jesus. Everything we must do must be done in a way which will cause people to think about him. The people thought very much about Jesus that day when they heard the shouting of the crowds. Everything we must do must cause people to think and be curious about Jesus. We're to be ambassadors for Christ. Adverts, if you like, for Jesus. When we help someone with the shopping, when we give a word of encouragement to someone, when we take time to, to listen to someone, when we go out of our way to do something for them. We must start with the people that we know and who know us. The people who know that we are followers of Jesus, that we are Christians. We show them the love of Christ in us. We allow Christ to love them through us. We let Jesus use us to show just how much he loves that person or persons. For that's what he has called us to do. Because then and only then will people, the people that we help and do good things to, will they see that Christ is at work in us, helping us and strengthening us, enabling us to do what we could never do on our own. They will start to see that our lives have been changed for the better, that we are just like them, but that we believe in Jesus and we are encouraging them to believe in him too and have the relationship with God's Son that we have. Let our lives, the way we live, the way we treat others, speak and shout out for Jesus. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The second word that we shouted out was Hosanna. And we've sung that this morning. Hosanna means something like save us now. It later became an expression of praise. Good News Bible we read says, Praise to David's son, praise God. Other verses say, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. It's this original meaning of Hosanna, save us now, that we're going to look at this morning. Because those who are in our churches, in our communities, may be saying those words today, save us now. They may be crying out to Jesus as those people did. Knowing that only Jesus can give them forgiveness. Knowing that only Jesus can give them a complete new start. Knowing that only Jesus can give them life. Life in all its fullness. One of the modern hymns says, You alone can rescue. You alone can save. You alone can lift us from the grave. You came down to find us, led us out of death. To you alone belongs the highest praise. There may be many people today who are calling out to Jesus to be saved. Perhaps they're ready to speak these words to Jesus, to ask him for forgiveness, for salvation, to ask him to come into their life as Savior and Lord, and to take charge of their life. 
change their lives forever. Jesus is listening to all who call out to him. Just as they heard the cries of Hosanna, save us now on that first Palm Sunday, so he hears the cries of those who cry out to him in faith today. Make way, make way for Christ the King in splendour the lives. Fling wide the gates and welcome him into your lives. Jesus will come into the lives of all those who ask him and are ready to receive and to welcome him to fling wide the gates of their lives and welcome him into them. He will come in and he will stay with them forever. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you always to the end of time, he says. And that is a sure and certain promise. In the book of Revelation, we read these words. Listen, I stand at the door of your life. They're spoken by Jesus. I'm standing at the door of your life. I'm knocking on that door. If you hear me, please open that door. And I will come in so that I can always be with you. There are people today who can hear Jesus knocking gently at their door. This is a time at this Easter season to open that door and welcome him into their lives. Peter says, now is the day of salvation. The people shouted, Hosanna, save us now. And many people are saying the same to Jesus today. The last shout was a question. Who is he? Who is he? That's the question that many of the people who were in Jerusalem for the Passover were asking as this crowd came down with Jesus from Bethany down the hill into the big city. Who is he? Perhaps many people are asking the same question today. They're not quite ready to ask Jesus to save them, but they're asking, who is he? They're curious about Jesus. And at Easter time, it's a great time for people to be curious. Christmas seems to be so busy and there's so many things happening, but at Easter, there's a time to focus on the real meaning. Who is Jesus? What's all this fuss about? That's what they were asking then, and that's what some people are asking today. What's all the fuss about? And the answer that came back was this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Who is he? People might ask us this week or at this Easter time. How will we answer? How will you answer? What do you say to someone who asks you what Easter is all about? But it's not just about chocolate eggs and Easter bunnies and so on, but there is more to it than that. What will you say to them? How will you reply to them? It was so uh, great to see that the children uh, in church here on Friday morning, um, uh, one of the wee boys um, asked me in the middle of the, the talk, um, is Jesus still alive? And I suggest he's still alive and he's, he's, he's in heaven. And one of his friends said, see, I told you so. <laughs> It was wonderful to hear that from, uh, from young, young minds, young people. Jesus is alive and he can have a relationship with each one of us. Will we tell them about Jesus when they say, who is he? What's all the fuss about? What is Easter all about? Will we tell them how Jesus came to earth to rescue each one of us, to save us from ourselves? Well, we tell them how Easter reminds us of Jesus' death on the cross and how that death was not the end. How he died in our place on the cross. How he paid the price for all our sins, all our wrongdoings of the past, the present and the future with his life. And how his death was not a defeat as it seemed but was a great triumph and a great victory. And how on that glorious day, the day that changed history, Jesus was brought back to life and appeared to Mary and to Peter and to all the disciples to prove that he really was alive. And to over 500 people, the Bible tells us. How the resurrection of Jesus at Easter is a great victory. A victory over death, a victory over sin, a victory over the evil and the devil. And how Jesus' death 
and his glorious and wonderful resurrection has opened up the way back to God. For each one of us, and there are no exceptions. How each one of us can have eternal life. How we can be with the one who created us in his own likeness. Be with our Father. Be with the one who loves us more than anyone else ever could. Will we tell them that? Will we tell them about Jesus? Will we tell them what he has done for each one of us? And what he can do for each single one of us that we speak to? How by his Holy Spirit he is slowly changing us from within? How he's at work in our lives, helping us, giving us strength, encouraging us, lifting us up, and loving us. And how Jesus can do the same for each person. If only they will acknowledge him for who he is, for what he has done, and ask them and welcome him into their lives. That's what Jesus is calling us to do. He calls us to be witnesses for him, to stand up. For Jesus, as we've often sung, stand up, stand up for Jesus. We must tell others about him. We must share with them what he's doing in our lives. We must show him, show them by the way we live our lives that Jesus is working in us, that we are not perfect by any manner of means, but that his spirit is in us and helping us to help others. When we think of all that Jesus has done for us, and we focus on that particularly in this holy week. When we think of that, is it too much to ask? We have something wonderful in our lives. We have someone wonderful. Jesus, by his spirit. Don't we want our family, our friends, our neighbours, yes, even our enemies, to know how wonderful Jesus is? Who is he? What's all this fuss about? He's God's son. He's the saviour of the whole world. He's the Lord. It's all about Jesus and all about what he has done for each one of us. It's all about what he's doing in our lives and continues to do and what we can do in the lives of our God. And so as we work backwards on our list on the, on the screen, when we've answered the first question or the last question, who is he? What's all the fuss about? When you, have, when you and I have told those who ask us about Jesus, about how he's at work in our lives, prayer is that they will come to say, Hosanna, save us now, and invite Jesus into their lives. So that along with all God's people, along with ourselves and many, many others, they may cry out in a <coughs> voice of praise to Jesus our Saviour. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Shall we pray? Lord, in our minds we can hear these words being um, called out. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna to the King of Kings. Who is he? Lord, many people are asking these questions at this time. Help us to make them curious about Jesus. Help us to gently be able to answer their questions when they ask who Jesus really is, as they were asking on that day. Lord, help us by the way that we live our lives to shout out for Jesus, to show others his love in all that we do and say and think. Lord, help us to focus upon the shouts of the crowd this Palm Sunday now in the sun. Father God, thank you for sending your Son. Lord Jesus, we proclaim with all those people in Jerusalem that triumphant Palm Sunday when you came into the city as King. Help us to continue to proclaim your name and to encourage others to do the same. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Final hymn is a joyful hymn, Rejoice, the Lord is King. <laughs> Oh,
may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this Palm Sunday and forevermore.